Testing one, two, three. Hello fellow gamers and welcome back to Crash Bandicraft 2. Now I know what you're thinking, oh but I thought he was working on the project a lot more now and yet he hasn't uploaded a video in a month. Well guess what, I've been ill. <laughs> That's right, now you feel bad, don't you? I've actually got an excuse of why I haven't been uploading anything. Yeah, I've been ill, but technically, because I have been ill, I've actually been working on Crash Bandicraft 2 a lot more than I probably would if I was actually well. Because I had basically nothing else to do, so I thought, hey, I'm just going to work a bit on Crash Bandicraft 2. So, uh, today's video is going to be a nice uh, commentary over uh, footage I have compiled over the last month or so. And it's quite a lot of footage, it actually adds up to 430. 36 gigabytes so basically for me to actually make any other videos I have to hurry up and edit this and get it out of the way because I have literally no room left whatsoever anyway so we're gonna jump straight into it the first thing I decided to work on when I took ill was TNT because if you remember from the last video if you even slightly interact with TNT it, ju it just explodes and it kills you horrifically but now uh, I can say that the TNT actually functions like it does in the games so you can jump on it it counts down and explodes or if you just hit it it just explodes and if you're dumb enough to stand near it it kills you so now we're gonna have a little look at uh, how the TNT actually works and I can say that I'm generally really quite proud of this so uh, in the last episode I said that there was a lot of gunk underneath the snow go a lot of redstone that I had no idea what it did or what it does um, but I managed to sort to uh, sort through it all and I found out that this section here highlighted in red is actually the entire section of commands for that first TNT block, but that looks disgusting and awful, so I redid all that and neatened it up and tightly compacted it into a nice little square, and, and the bit in green you see there uh, is, is what the TNT commands look like now, and I'm generally really proud of this because of how good it looks, but this was a really big pain to make because we have multiple little systems here interacting with each other, and the timing has to be extremely precise for it to explode correctly and not do it more than once, and it took me the best part of three hours to get this actually functioning correctly. So as you can see here, nicely lined up, both TNT in the level are now fully finished and fully functional. So now we get to the bit that I was looking forward to for so long, cleaning up junk. Now that I'd uh, redone the TNT system, I was able to just destroy, completely destroy the old system, which just looked gross and was just junk under snow. Go. It looked awful, but I was finally able to get rid of that. But also, I'd uh, been recreating some other system as well. So in Snowgo, there are some automated traps and such which can crush crash as he runs under them but I remade those and I stuck them in those little boxes which meant I could just get rid of all of the old junk just, just completely remove it and it felt so good to tidy up you know what I mean but of course the best part was the old crate bounce physics remember that remember that in the last episode I talked about I, rec I completely replaced that entire section with just a tiny little bit over in the main area which meant now that that was obsolete I could just wipe it off of the face of the earth there is no greater feeling than getting rid of the junk you don't need anymore i tell you so i did fix a plethora of other bugs as well such as one fruit now spawn correctly and don't double up all the time which was a bug in the last episode so i'm glad i managed to fix that one but also uh the bonus sections now have all of their boxes and items as they should but also mm, <coughs> That was disgusting. But also, I have finally added... Uh, what is stuck in my throat? Jesus Christ. <coughs> but I also uh, added box underside, so you can uh, now break crates from underneath. <coughs> This is horrible. <laughs> but one other very special feature that I did add is bounce crates. So that's right, if you jump on bounce crates, you can jump on them for five times before they eventually break each time giving you one per fruit. If you don't jump on uh, jump on a bounce crate for a little while, then a timer will happen. And as soon as you try to jump back on it after the timer has run out, uh, it will automatically just break, like in the game. And also, of course, if you just spin the crate, you won't get any one per fruit. But I'm really, really happy with this feature because for so so long over the development of Crash Bandicraft, I was not planning on adding uh, bounce crates at all. There were many features back when I first started that I was not planning on adding at all because I didn't know how redstone worked. But then I got uh, the redstone worked. But then of course I invited Jimmy along, and through him I've learned so much about redstone. So it really amazes me that I never planned to add bounce crates at all, and yet here we are, bounce crates fully featured and added into the game. 
when actually they, d they don't completely work they're a tiny bit faulty but shh, shh, shh. don't tell anyone also can i just say how cute and dinky the commands look for the dance crates look at them look at them oh they're in a the little box and all stacked on each other and it's so small and dinky and i love it oh you, you may find animals cute but no i find command blocks cute <laughs> command blocks make me hard <laughs> <laughs> also, one last thing, Aku Aku Invincibility works now because it was a complete letdown when they didn't work in the last episode, but I spent some time working on them and now if you get Aku Aku Invincible, when you're walking around, every single crate around you breaks and you get all the Wampa fruit from the boxes, which is really entertaining in some cases. Anyway, so the majority of this video is going to be about moving things to other places because I, li I like things to be organized and nice and neat. So the first thing I decided to move was the uh, the level spawn area. Now every single time a player jumps into a level they see the black screen and all that. Well that is actually just a, this, this black textured box which uh, the player has teleported in so that the level can load and then you jump into the actual level after that. But I decided I don't like it snuck under snow go like that so I decided to move it into its own new place. The only problem with that is that means that I needed to change every single teleport command uh, from teleporting into the old box into the new box which means I just have to go through every single command block to try and find every single instance of the TP command and change it into the new area. So once I'd moved the new level loading room into its new location I discovered a few command blocks uh, hiding behind there so I decided to clean them up a bit and move them into their own little boxes because I just couldn't help myself. Next up music Every single piece of music in the game is comprised of its own special timer made of hoppers So every single time the items in the hoppers go uh, all the way around the thing It then reactivates the music But of course I've got lots of music dotted around the place So I decided I needed to clean that up a bit So I decided to pop every single piece of in-game music into the same area Which meant I had to move every single piece, uh, every single music timer And stick them into their own little boxes All in a nice neat line, all in the same area now, of course, understandably, this uh, this took quite a long time because it involved me changing oh so many command blocks for all the different levels and things. Luckily, there's not actually that much music in the game at this point, but there's still a lot of stuff I had to copy and clone over. All of the contents of the hoppers needed to be copied. Every single command that linked and activated music in some way needed to be updated to work with uh, the new uh, hoppers, uh, with the new timers, which meant the warp room, uh, the level, the bonus level, all that stuff just had to be updated and moved. It took a while, but we got there got there in the end and it was so much neater and I'm so glad I did it. Anyway, so moving on, let's go and have a look at some fun stuff, shall we? And by fun stuff, I mean some funny mistakes I made because in this next part, I decided to try and move around the uh, item collection systems. Now, this, uh, this entire group here you can see in this square is basically all the commands related to collecting items in the game. So if there's like one per throat on the floor, when you pick it up, it puts it in, into your inventory. This is system then takes it out and adds a score to it but it does it for everything such as crystals and lives and whatnot but as you have probably noticed the whole thing is just just slightly on the wonk a little bit and i'm a perfectionist there's no way i could leave it in a position like that so i wanted to just shift it over a bit to be centered into the square but before i did that there was one thing that i had to move that's right it's the old crate system but before i changed all of the crates to concrete and whatnot every single crate in the game was a chest and it was all cloned from this this location here so every single crate in snow go level and whatnot they were all just cloned from this section here so it was really nostalgic seeing all of these here but of course times change and I didn't need these anymore because it the, this system had been replaced so I felt it was time to uh, remove this out of the way uh, and delete them so I can make room for moving the uh, item collection system so it was a simple case of clone the old system into a new location a new temporary location deleting the old system and then moving the uh, the clone cloned system uh, into its new location and then of course after that I then have just had to go through and update everything to make sure it worked for the new locations but the fun uh, new location but the funny thing was when I went to go and test it uh, it did not work for some reason and I went back to find out what could possibly be the cause of it and um this <laughs> 
<laughs> a giant rod of redstone sticking straight through com through the commands, breaking them all. I, it must have been that I forgot. Uh, I must have missed one of the uh, the commands from the other areas. So it was trying to place uh, redstone and stone into the place where it wasn't anymore. So I had to go through and try and work out what uh, commands were broken in that. So about 15 minutes later, I'd managed to find out what uh, command blocks were causing the problems, and I managed to uh, repair all of, the, all of the damage that had been done. But I'd just like to point out, in this bit of footage you're seeing right now, when I first went over to try and find out what the problem was, it took me quite a long time to actually notice the fact that there was a piece of stone and redstone sticking out of the commands like that. I just find that f I just find it so funny editing back, because I know I, in my head, it, I was, what was going through my head was just like, well, what's the problem here? I don't, I don't see what's causing the problems. Oh, there's a giant, there's a giant group of blocks sticking out of the command blocks. It's just hilarious. Ah, before we wrap up today, we have one last thing to talk about, which is, which is good because I've been editing this for many days, but <clears throat> one last thing to talk about. And that last thing is the bonus system for Snow Go. In this section here, uh, the, the, all of this section of redstone controls how the bonus section works. And I made it in a time where I did not care about layout and all of that junk. So for the last thing I did before we end this video, I decided to completely recreate that. Now that took the best part of about three hours. So the basis of recreating this system was to copy and paste many, many command blocks uh, into a different layout to make it run a little bit smoother because everything everything was all really disorganized and I found that maybe stacking uh, command blocks on top of each other into nice long towers was a much wet, better way of doing it than sticking it along the floor. It just takes up a lot less space. So over the, la over the next like two or so hours I recreated uh, the entire system for when the player enters the bonus round so it involves detecting the player falling through into the tunnel and then activating all the stuff activating all the titles that happen all the changing physics all of the death the sensors had to be changed um, it, ju it just involved moving loads and loads of command blocks and uh, neaten it into a nice little area but as I was saying one month later it's pretty damn difficult to try and remember uh, what I did and what I worked on especially three hours worth of content um, but as, as, it, as it is right now, the current standings is I've, I've moved the majority of Snowgo's uh, redstone and uh, neatened it all up. There's still a few things to work on, such as checkpoints and nitro crates and so, um, things such as that. But there's one thing I've noticed when working on uh, Crash Bandicraft throughout this entire year, is that no matter how much how much I think the uh, Snowgo level is finished, there always seems to be so much more stuff stacked uh, up that I still need to do. Like, if you think about it, Snowgo, it's pretty, it's pretty damn playable. You can go from start to finish and you can go through it and you can basically see every single feature working. But the more you look, the more you realize there's still so much left to do. There's like, nitro cakes aren't functional yet. I still haven't finished all the bouncy, adding all the bouncy crates to the bonus section. Uh, uh, all the crates haven't been added for that. There's just, there's just so much more like what happens when uh, the player reaches the end, you know, it doesn't record any progress at the moment. And I haven't even added the options book uh, uh, in the in the hot bar yet. Remember that? When you used to go through levels and you used to see the uh, the um, the options menu, still haven't added that, so I should definitely get that done for the next episode or whatever. But it's just a case of when I think I'm done, more stuff seems to pop up, and that has been the case for the last few years. But anyway, I'm going to end this video here. I hope you've enjoyed this overly long look at how I build stuff in Crash uh, in Crash Bandicoot 2 nice and live. I don't think I'm going to record things uh, live from now and they're going to go back to being roundups of stuff I've already worked on. Mostly because, well, my computer is screaming at me to uh, make up some space and I, ne I need some space to actually record other stuff as well. So I don't think I'll be doing something like this again. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. This has been Crash Bandicoot 2. I have been TCK and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye! <laughs>